Now we'll demonstrate armature testing with the Baker DX tester. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how to connect your high voltage leads from the AWA or from the, your DX to the AT101 ZTX armature test accessory. Okay, so the first thing we'd like to do is connect the black ground lead to the left bar here labeled ground lead, lead two, lead three. So that's the connection. We're just gonna clip that onto that post. And then we're also gonna grab lead three and connect it and lead two as well. Remember your leads are labeled one, two, and three. And then test lead one, where the active voltage is gonna come through, will connect to test lead one bar over here like that. So as you can see, there's some extra cables. We have a communication cable connects to the ZTX uh, and the DX. And we also have a foot switch cable, which connects to the ATF 5000 fixture to allow for a remote push button, push to test button operation. Either of these buttons will initiate uh, the testing for us. Uh, on the top of the ZTX, we also have an emergency stop uh, button, uh, push to engage and twist to reset, and then green and red indicating lights. Uh, green when testing is not in progress and red when testing is in progress. Okay, so on the DX uh, screen, we wanna select the icon for surge testing. And now under the device, we wanna make sure we select uh, the ZTX. Again, if you're doing armature testing with the power pack, you can select the power pack as your option. Uh, we'll select the ZTX and we'll see the icon displayed down here. Okay, and now what we wanna do is just have our uh, ATF um, uh, sensing points there at the right spacing for the commutator that we're gonna connect to. So that's in the middle. Put the test probes down, press the button to initiate the test. And then we wanna increase the voltage slightly so we get a sense of where the zero crossings are and then scale the waveform appropriately. And it seems like this waveform scaled well for us now. And I'll continue to increase the voltage. I'm gonna change it to the fast ramp rate and increase to my test voltage. So for this armature, we're testing it today at 400 volts. So I'll ramp it until I see 400 volts, and it will auto scale the voltage for us. And then when I get to 400 volts, I'll stop ramping up a little bit more. Okay, and then I'll release the test button. And now I want to set that waveform as my reference to compare all other waveforms. It says new reference set, acknowledged. And now I need to select the ZS override, the zero stop override option. Acknowledge the warning that we're gonna override that functionality. And that will allow the voltage to go right back up to the test voltage um, as I push the button. So now I'm gonna advance my commutator, put my probes down, hit the push to test button. And now we capture the second waveform. And now just continue around the armature, measuring each bar to bar surge pattern. Now, in the lower right hand corner, we have a bar graph that is giving us a percentage difference between, pattern difference between the reference waveform and the bar that we just captured. So we get that bar graph. Now it's always going to be displaying it relative to the reference waveform. If I want to see all the waveforms that we've captured, I can select this button here. And that will allow me to look at the reference waveform only, as we saw already, all the waveforms that we've captured. I also have the option to clear everything and start from scratch. And I can also export or import a reference wave from a memory stick uh, connected to the USB port. So let's just keep the reference wave for now. I'll do one more capture here. Now, if I, did, if I made a mistake and I need to go back, I can select the delete wave and that will delete the last waveform for the last coil test or the last bar to bar test. Click yes, and that will change the reference coil back to the last, and I can reperform the test. Okay, once you've completed testing the entire armature, uh, you can click the save button here, and then save the record either to the active folder and record or create a new record. In this case, I'll just select the active folder. Now, this is one extra screen we have when we save, and this is saving the reference waveform name. I'm gonna call this demo two. 
and we're done.